what can be done if the autopilot falls out? Now looking here, we can have Dawn launch the surface uh, MFD up, and you can see the red flag coming as the AP starts to come down. For Apollo 15, your target altitude is about 167 kilometers. So all you would need to do then is uh, continue to thrust and pitch to give you the speed needed to get it to orbit uh, and get it to about 167 kilometers. You may need to practice that a few times without the autopilot. Uh, so the two items you would want to have up uh, would be the surface MFD and the orbit MFD. In order that you don't go too far up, you don't pitch too high, and that you have enough speed and velocity to get orbit before cutoff. If you go to Lunar Transfer MSD and click on the flight monitor, you can see the orbit with the Earth referenced. It's nice to have a checklist handy uh, inside the program, uh, and that's pretty much what astronauts do. So with the Note MSD, uh, that's an add-on that you may not be aware of, but I love, I like it. It's the no MFD. I can make any checklist I want in a text file and then include them uh, in, in, and bring them up in Orbiter. There's a matter of just selecting which, uh, which checklist I want to look at. So very good. Looking at my checklist, I see the TLI is done at uh, uh, 2 hours and 50-some minutes into the flight and trying to stick with the Apollo 15 uh, ground elapsed time. You can see the ground elapsed time is posted uh, in the Lunar Transfer MFD on the flight monitor page. The GET is posted on the upper right hand corner. Uh, so you don't always have to have that GET on your main screen if you don't want to. Usually around two minutes or so prior to ignition, uh, we will change our attitude, that is the direction of flight, in order to properly set up and point in the right direction for the burn. So we can turn on the flight monitor and the lunar transfer MFD and uh, watch the, uh, the visual during the burn. and we'll change our reference from the Earth to reference from, to be the Moon and we can get the right uh, telemetry now and data uh, for how that burn went. And you can see here the PEA to be about uh, 63 kilometers I believe and we're going to want to get that up to 110 during the mid-course correction. So that would be the item that we're looking for. That's the altitude our spacecraft will be at the closest approach coming around the back side of the moon. Now setting up for the uh, docking of the limb to the command service module. Now that we're heading on out to the moon we're going to capture and get hard dock and then eject the third stage. Docking is explained in its own video. I'll just go through this real quickly as you watch the steps uh, as we make our way through. You can see here, I'm not going to even bother with the docking MFD, you don't need to. We have the optical tool to use, we just uh, zoom in on it, the COAS.
So here we are. We're on our way to the moon now. We can uh, speed up time and and so I'll bring up our checklist and uh, take a look at what's coming up next. That would be the mid-course correction. And in Apollo 15 uh, actual flight data, we see that it happened around uh, 28 hours or so. So in order to do the mid-course correction, we're going to bring up uh, the same program, the TLI, only this time. We're going to change it to surface, go down, and it's already set up for the TLCC. That's the mid-course correction or the translunar course correction. Now, uh, coming down and selecting the surface, we're going to go ahead and page through until we get to Hadley. And that's the target on the moon that we're heading for. And we want to set up for auto burn. So let's check our... Delta V. Delta V is your change in velocity. And we can actually manually change the current uh, 20. <laughs> as time goes by, as we make a course, we went from 83 kilometers uh, altitude above the surface of the moon to about 20. During this mid course correction, we're going to adjust it to 110 and somewhere near there. And that's where we would want to be. Uh, and if we do it now, it's a lot more fuel efficient than waiting to get to the moon and then having no, to do the burn uh, at that point. So burn time will only be about five seconds, which is fabulous. It's number not far away just a few minutes away from and once again as we get to the couple minutes away we'll do an attitude correction make sure we're burning in the right direction all that will be handled by the lunar transfer MFD and we'll come back and talk to you once we get closer to the burn time We'll proceed with a normal mission. We can oh, set up the right MFD I'm a smooth for the flight runner. monitor. So we can want, get a visual well, on a burn. You, guys down there can figure all uh, this out. you don't really need a checklist now. So you see the burn was uh, very quick, just a few seconds. And if you look up at how much fuel we used, we only used eight tenths of our fuel. So we still have 99.2% of our fuel left and that's uh, very good. We can change the flight monitor now, make sure it references the moon and get a good visual on the path around the moon and see uh, that the PEA is indeed around 110 kilometers or close enough. Seven, eight hours in, we're going to go through our checklist, see what comes up next. We can continue to look at a flight monitor. We see that uh, we still have a good Good data on the PEA, still about 109, just as the mid-course correction wanted us to be. Very little has changed. We're in great shape now to do the lunar insertion. So uh, the next thing on the checklist would be to um, get captured into the lunar orbit and circleize that orbit. Shows the burnt time quite a bit, quite a ways away. So we'll come back and talk to you when that time comes closer. So we're skipping forward now a few.
few minutes and we see we're still burning and we are indeed captured now. Um, if we quit we would just keep going around the moon in this elliptical orbit but we want to circularize it and kind of get uh, the 110 or so kilometers above the surface as our altitude into our parking orbit. In the Apollo 15 actual missions, they actually took several burns to do this. Um, we're going to take care of it with the one transfer MFD right up front. So we can bring up our checklist again now that we have done that and take a look at what comes up next. And the next few items for the actual Apollo 15 would be to change the shape of our orbit, get it circularized, get into park or parking orbit. Um, actually, I think they, they may have had a elliptical shape to the orbit in order to undock with the lunar module before they circularize. Um, I'm going to handle that after I undock. For now, we're in our, our parking orbit waiting for undock at... Uh, Oh, around a hundred hours into GET. My main objective with this video was to show the lunar transfer MFD being used to do the mid-course correction. It's an excellent tool to do it. You can do the mid-course correction with the lunar transfer MFD. I prefer to do it that way. It's the it's the right tool for the job. Um, the other aspects of the video uh, were just uh, for keeping a good frame of reference of when it happens and, and a little bit more detail of what happens when.